appetite for uh, rapid testing and learning. The reality is no one has the playbook. And if you have to write your own playbook, you have to try and experiment out there because there are there is no silver bullet on how to navigate uh, through this. So if you think that someone can prescribe, uh, you can learn, but you still have to test and experiment. So have that, uh, like I said earlier, um, fail fast, learn fast mindset. That's very, very critical. Ladies and gentlemen, warm welcome to CMOTV.live, an initiative of Accent Info Media, which is also a parent company of CIOTV.live uh, and Enterprise IT World, a leading IT uh, magazine for uh, uh, CIOs and CXO community across the world. Today, my guest is Hitu Chawla, uh, Chief Marketing Officer, uh, Microsoft India. Uh, she is responsible for the brand voice and purpose uh, while creating engaging customer experiences, deepening the in, uh, intersection of marketing and sales and delivering tangible business outcomes. She has over two decades of experience and done different hats across strategy, consulting, a business channel management and marketing. She has thrived on deep business acumen strategic insights, creative vision, and a genuine sense of connections. She is also passionate about mentoring the new generation of business, uh, marketing leaders, and a strong advocate of women driving impact in senior leadership role. So helping a uh, welcoming Hitu to this conversation. Hitu, warm welcome to you. Thank you so much, uh, Sanjay. Like I said, it's absolutely a privilege for me as well, because in forums like this, uh, more than me sharing, I'm looking forward to walk away learning because these these are indeed interesting times. And I, I think no one really has a sol silver bullet. So uh, these forums definitely help you learn and grow. What is your uh, you know, sense of sentiment of the market amid COVID-19? you know, almost like two quarters have passed. What are you seeing in the market? Well, I think one thing is for sure, uh, which which is uh, stating the obvious, but an important uh, obvious is that the amount of digital uh, adoption that we've seen in the last five months is probably uh, equivalent to what has what have what it would have been in five years. I think uh, technology clearly has become front and center of our lives, whether be it our personal lives, we at work, in any context, I think um, it's just become an integral part. I don't think any of us would have imagined for it to be uh, what it is. The fact that it was, the fact that yes, you constantly on your phones, on your devices, all of that was very different from what it is today. So I think the pace of digital transformation that you uh, that we're seeing across the industry is uh, is just paramount, and clearly it will even post the pandemic. I I, I don't think it'll be wrong to say it'll be a way of living in in a lot of ways. So that that's probably that clearly stands out as the most obvious. I would say. So what has been the strategy of the marketeers as per? Uh, 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 as far as you are concerned, uh, to stay competitive uh, in the market uh, for last uh, uh, five months or six months and going forward also? Well, if I would say that uh, COVID has completely changed the business landscape, it almost seems cliched at this point because for the marketing function, you know, be it from brands to media owners to creative agency, I think this period has challenged us to tear the rule bo uh, rule book because we are constantly ad uh, adapting to change. And it's, I would say, it surely uh, introduced or this is another dimension of marketing dexterity, I would say, uh, mm -hmm. because we are doing things that could have taken weeks or months that are happening in days. And at times I find myself really in uh, being caught in terms of making a decision within ours. And that's not how at least I am familiar with how the function used to be. Um, and while I would say we're still establishing what the new normal would uh, be like, and I, it may be a little 
uh, further off, but these several months um, in it and moving from a response now to a rebound uh, phase, I would say there are clearly some learnings and strategies that are emerging that I can think um, can be summed up uh, under three buckets. I think first clearly that marketers are seeing uh, and brands are seeing is being purpose led. You can see that the customers are being drawn to brands that lead with authenticity, boldness and a sense of purpose. Because as a marketing leader, if you do not have clarity on the organization's mission and what the core purpose of why it exists, uh, it will be a struggle for you to convey on what the brand value and the brand value proposition is. And that is what the customer is looking for today. Like what, what is the true promise or what is it that you have to offer to us? So the more purpose led that you are, the better your ability to connect with the customer and, and establish that relationship, a genuine relationship. Uh, second clearly is being agile and innovative. I, I just mentioned, I think the whole, uh, the whole fabric of dexterity that I mentioned that we are building. I think to increase the speed of campaign creation, a lot of mature marketing orgs are combining um, analytics. They're creating cross-functional agile teams. I can take an example of Microsoft. We have, uh, we stood up, you know, which wasn't uh, which wasn't a function in the past, but now we have these V teams across marketing, IT, HR, crisis communication, sales. As a as a literally like a digital war room is what we stood up and we have sustained that since the time uh, the pandemic has hit, uh, hit us and the lockdown has happened. Because what's that allowing us to do is get have a real pulse of what's happening outside and bring that voice in and being able to respond uh, to the customer needs. Also, I would say there is this whole notion of a fail fast, learn fast mindset, mm. because I like I was telling you earlier before we started, there, there isn't a silver bullet. Uh, unless you test an experiment, you do not know what will work or not work. So I think that whole agility and constantly pushing um, the boundary on innovation totally in a new realm is the second thing that I would say that marketers are definitely embracing and are being challenged with. And last I would say is, like I mentioned, uh, the digital transformation is not just in the industry or, you know, in, in businesses. It's in every facet of life, including marketing as a function. You see the acceleration of digital and MarTech far more than what it was prior to the pandemic. Uh, everyone now realizes the need that how it, it's an integral part of uh, the marketing function. I was like I mentioned earlier, like we've seen five years of uh, digital adoption probably in five months and which is across all facets. If you look at the importance of e-commerce and digital talents, both for B2C and B2B companies has grown significantly. And hence, if you're not as a brand, as a company, as a marketer, you're not in uh, investing and not innovating in digital first experiences, uh, then, you, then you're then you definitely losing out. Because I think when the pandemic had hit us, the initial and because it was more a response, um, a, a reactive re response, I may, if I may, all of us literally shifted from what we were used to and familiar with in a physical world and we started porting it into the digital world. It wasn't designed for a digital first environment. And we know that we, we, we are seeing and experiences, uh, experiencing the webinar fatigue or the whole virtual. Yeah. Uh, you know, the amount of the goodness is there is there's a lot of virtual content now. So there's a lot of education awareness, but uh, but that is just one aspect of what as as uh, marketing is expected to deliver. You do need to you. You don't just do top of the funnel. You need to take the funnel down. And that's where each of us are getting challenge. And that's where I believe technology is playing a bigger role because in addition to creative marketing, I would say that you need to complement it with smart marketing and that's and investing in the right data and MarTech tools will light up that smart. Okay. So in summing it up, I'm saying that three things being purpose led, uh, being agile and innovative and accelerating digital and MarTech. Those Absolutely. are the three things uh, that I see as themes.
Okay, now the situation has changed uh, before pandemic and you know mid pandemic and post pandemic. Things are going to be changed completely. Couple of things, remote works, social distancing are the new normals now. So how are the CMOs are going to tap the new opportunity? Of, of course, these, these, are, these, are, these are the two terms going to be new, completely new world. People are sent back to their offices. So there is a new requirement of the you know ICT consumption and I'll say consumption in every nature right so how are you seeing that an opportunity because many of the people I mean you, you know the industry how the industry is behaving now well um, you are right remote work is the current uh, norm and I don't think um, who would have thought when we packed our laptops back in March to work from home that we would still be video conferencing from different corners of our homes several months later. Uh, but clearly looks like uh, if not remote, hybrid is here to stay uh, even post the pandemic. I think there is enough uh, research analysts and proof points that each one of us are living through. So uh, even post the pandemic, there, there will be new norms. Um, and just to just to put that in perspective as an example, like before the lockdowns, I don't think any educational institute would have dreamt of or schools and colleges would have thought that they will create entirely uh, leave virtual ca classrooms, but do virtual exams. Imagine for teachers to think in that context. And so what that means is there are new possibilities that are out there, maybe a whole new approach to education and radical but maybe a student wouldn't graduate from an ivy league from mm. what from courses offered by top 10 leading professors around the world who knows the Absolutely. point being that th that we are experiencing certain aspects which we didn't think were even viable which is becoming a reality so you do not necessarily know once we're off this how much of that current uh stop gap arrangement might become become the new normal so I think what that implies for as a marketer is we need to rethink our customer experience and uh, experiences and engagement playbook because that really needs to be far more hyper local and more personalized based on these new use cases we are seeing mm -hmm. because the reality is these did not exist in the past um, and as they are emerging how are we snapping on and how are we rethinking okay. on how do we uh, how do we pitch to the education very quickly, and if I take an example from a B2B standpoint, I think mm. we need to re rethink our, our media strategies as well. Uh, you, if you take B2B as an example, which relies or relied heavily on the annual circuit of industry trade shows and in-person engagements to build customer relations and network. And now we are shifting our budget from these physical events and using to address gaps in our uh, overall digital experience, which could be infusing bots in our websites to yeah. investing in tools to streamline lead generation. Or I would say even uh, revisiting some of the foundational elements like SEO or digital ABM strategy. So there is a lot of shift of focus that is happening even in our function uh, to your point about what this remote is. Um, is is enforcing on us and our function. Well, you nicely uh, brought out that point of bots uh, in building bots into it. That means bringing in a lot of automation at the front end, uh, um, you know, uh, eliminating the human errors or human uh, connectivity and capturing data automatically. So how has been the digital and automation strategy uh, helped uh, during this time, how the marketers have latched on to that opportunity? Has there been any progress on a broader level? I would say a definite uh, yes that there has been a delta, but is it to the extent, and this is more just reading up, um, I think it was earlier this week I was reading an article from um, McKenzie which said the it is surprising the actual adoption of uh, it, from a marketing digital transformation based on a research that they've done uh, i think the number was about 21 percent is the actual uh, modern marketing uh, adoption which you would expect for it to be far higher has it improved and is it showing that that it that the delta will be there a definite yes 
I think the reality is with the sudden explosion of uh, customer engagement on digital channels and, and the fact that there's availability of sophisticated tools to track them, we as marketers have far more data and analytical horsepower at our disposal than ever before. Right. And if we are not, it, it's, it's on us if we are not making that investment, making that shift, because uh, in, in the past we've struggled, we've, we've always wanted customer data and insights. Now I guess it's the reverse where it's, it's a tsunami of customer data probably. But these digital journeys and engagements, they do provide you insights to target customers with, with razor sharp precision. And it's not a thing to say, it is a reality because it allows you when you are navigating, uh, when you are able to see how the customer is navigating on how much time are they investing on a certain ad to where they are moving next on what they're engaging with. Mm. Th there is done out there which allows you to now personalize not only when and where we talk to them, but also how we deliver that uh, product and service of ours. So if, if the shift to di digital and automation is not happening, the only people to blame are marketers and no one else, I would say. Okay. Now, uh, from a analytics, this is the time that, uh, you know, dollar spend is going to happen around uh, the newest technologies, the uh, AIs, the analytics, uh, because robotics is already there. So, how has been the growth of these technologies uh, for the marketeers? I know that you have got all this technology at your disposal, and you rightly said that uh, you are at a very advantageous position um, during this time. And um, there is nobody, you know, the senior leadership uh, uh, is in good mood to support you in this. So how has been these things, say analytics, AI, uh, social strategy, uh, you know, uh, progress uh, during this time, uh, six months, uh, or I mean, during this period, I'll say. So let me, before I comment specifically on the six months, let me just probably just share um, from a Microsoft standpoint, because I can say it's been a fascinating, uh, it's been fascinating to experience the first hand digital transformation of marketing at Microsoft, because until about five years ago, uh, the world of marketing at Microsoft was very different because in, in this old world, marketing teams would build multiple marketing programs and ta uh, tactics, each targeting the customer and creating engagement in silos, which resulted literally in thousands of individual funnels and customer journeys. So as a result, the customer had a disconnected experience. And also the process of lead handoffs, and especially if you're on a B2B environment, that is one of the key accountability or KPI that you measured on. The, the process of how we handed that off and how we uh, to sales and measured it was also very inconsistent because each marketing program or that tactic will claim that you've influenced pipe or revenue, which made it very difficult to determine what was really working. Until we went through our modern marketing transformation and now we do use a robust Martech uh, platform, a very exhaustive one. And I would say we're still on that journey, uh, but that provides to our marketeers to start with, to you know, teams like mine and um, others across my peers in other areas. It provides insights to target customers with that precision. For the customers, it provides a very rich, personalized, connected journey and most importantly to a sales team, it provides these high quality leads, which um, which are based on lead scoring algorithm and machine learning insights, which tell them, which tells them if the customer is really in a buying mode and ready to talk to them. So uh, I, what I'm sharing with you is, to me, it's not a six month, obviously the fact that we uh, we had that advantage because we'd been on that journey it's become even more pronounced right now that because we had it, uh, it's allowing us to slice and dice uh, the information in the current context on how do you then use that data for better storytelling, for better targeting, yeah. for better scenarios that we need to pitch right now with the solutions mm. that are most pertinent. 
All right, Hitu, I have got a couple of questions and after that I'll open the floor for others to ask you question. Uh, uh, one is that uh, dollar spend, uh, when you ask about dollar, dollar spend earlier times, it used to be, uh, you know, at your disposal, you can do anything you like on any market, on any technology. Now, the uh, that is a sentiment in uh, um, from the senior leadership to contract the dollar in terms of everything, including marketing. And the marketers are uh, instructed to do more with the less. Do you also see similar kind of thing um, across the board or it is specific to certain areas or certain uh, markets or certain industries? I would, so let me first start by saying, and, and my personal belief, given that marketing is front and center of how companies engage and communicate what they have to offer, mm. um, even more so during a crisis or downtown, it's not a time to stop spending. But yes, it may be a time to change how you spend it, but not stop marketing investments. Uh, so that that's my belief. And, and at Microsoft, we haven't seen a, um, a marketing spend cut. But yes, are we being more, uh, are we giving it a hard look at where are you investing it? Absolutely, mm. yes. The cutting cost and avoiding waste cost are two different things. So is there a sharper lens on the how of it where in the past you may still be, you know, um, it may still be okay. So that luxury or benefit you may not have, but uh, the, the focus is definitely not on cutting cost or, you know, uh, kind of pulling on marketing budgets. But the reality is, to your point, is it uh, across the board? I think different different industries, different uh, customers are at different maturity cycles and their reality of how it has hit them is very different. I mean, if you look at the airline industry and um, it's a very different context for them or, mm. or hospitality industry versus when you're talking to FMCG. So is FMCG cutting it? Maybe not, but will the airline rethink because their survival may be under question? So each company may have, a, each industry and each company may have a different context, but I think there is enough and more uh, study and research out there that brands who continue, who invest meaningfully, okay. uh, even in times of recession, come out stronger um, on the other side. But the point is that you want to make sure that it is smart marketing, it is smart investment, and it will go back to um, how is that smart being infused in, in, in your decision making. And that's where data and technology kind of can, can come to our help and support as marketeers. All right, last question is what is the kind of advice you have uh, for your peers or the boarding CMOs, marketing leaders who are about to come to your position and fill into your shoes in different organizations? I think I've already said and shared a lot, uh, but if there's one, there's one additional thing that I would like to share. I think amongst smart marketing, using data, being purposeful, everything that I said. The other thing I would uh, encourage is have the appetite for uh, rapid testing and learning. The reality is no one has the playbook. And if you have to write your own playbook, you have to try and experiment out there because there are there is no silver bullet on how to navigate uh, through this. So if you think that someone can prescribe, uh, you can learn but you still have to test and experiment. So have that, uh, like I'd said earlier, um, fail fast, learn fast mindset. That's very, very critical. The last thing, just in summing it up, uh, I would say clearly marketing is embracing a very agile culture of innovation and uh, creativity. And this newfound agility will, will stay even once the pandemic is over. And the important thing is the lessons we are learning now are here to stay because it will redefine the way we work and engage in the coming months. Okay, thank you very much and see you soon during our uh, CMO event uh, on 17th of next month.
Super. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ken. Thank you, Sandra.